How you doing? Coming at you with another video. This video um, is going to be about reading maps. All right. And as you can see, mine looks like it's been through hell and back. But yes, this is going to be a very basic, basic, basic video on reading maps. Um, I, I've noticed that a lot of truck drivers out here have gotten um, used to using GPS, which is great. But GPS is nothing more than a tool. So understanding that. Getting back to the bare basics, you need to understand how to read a map. All right, map reading is the fundamental, like one of the fundamental parts of truck driving. You cannot just come out here, plug it into a GPS, and just drive because it will get you. It can get you lost, and you it, it, it'll put you in a bad spot. So understanding how to read a map is another portion of the videos that I've been dropping about uh, trip planning. So uh, this is going to be a basic, very rudimentary, just uh, very quick video on map reading. All right. And now, with that being said, we're going to flip over to the first page, Table of Contents, all right? Basically, Table of Contents, everybody's read a book before, all right? Talking about hazmat, once you get your hazmat license or endorsement, I have to say, uh, this will be, this will mean more towards you. Then you have a portion of the map that talks about the uh, pre-trip and post-trip inspection, all right? Talks about IFTA, uh, things of that nature. Now, I'm going to skip over to a part that's uh, very that's important to it, all the map is important to truck truckers, but you need to understand um, that there's certain parts that it's going to apply more to you than um, other pages. All right, bridge table. This is very important right here. This will let you know the distance uh, when when you have the. Um, the distance and feet between the extremes of any group of two or more consecutive axles. Basically, this side right here is the feet, right? This side right here talks about how many axles your truck will have, all right? Now, with that being said, you need to understand that this will let you know uh, basically just the maximum load you can carry uh, in any group of two or more consecutive axles all right uh, I'll just I'll let you guys read that and figure it out on yourself it gives a little formula down there but that's very important to understand because different states have different laws regarding how much you can and cannot carry all right and that's per axle all right <clears throat> This section right here that I just flipped to you real fast, I accidentally flipped away from, very important section as well. This will let you know what roads you can and can't go on and what um, where, where you have a low clearance. Because as you will learn, a truck is 13 feet 6 inches high. Now, these pages right here will let you know what road what interstate, what highway, whether you're going eastbound or westbound, it will let you know where there's a way station. It will also let you know the height of the bridges that you will come across. So this is a very important part of uh, doing a pre-trip, or excuse me, trip planning. So as you can see, you flip through it, it goes through all the different states. Uh, the reason I'm flipping through this pretty fast and doing a very quick video on this is because I'm about to actually show you the the uh, the trip planning that I did for the load I just finished. They're currently unloading me at the moment. So I'm gonna make both these videos back to back, but I wanted to have an individual video for maps. All right, now, and this is the part that is talking about Canada. All right, this page, or these pages right here, will show you the different time zones and their borders, all right? Eastern Standard Time, Central, Mountain, uh, and Pacific. Now we get into the actual maps, all right? I'm gonna go over to Georgia map. Understanding how a map works, all right? I'm gonna go with up here. Well, I'll start with the map as a whole. If you look at the map, you will see that there appear to be uh, orange lines throughout it. Those orange lines are actually the routes that a semi truck can drive on, all right? Throughout the, uh, these are the highways and the roads and the interstates that run through Georgia 
to let you know what road you can and cannot go on on a semi truck. Now, that being said, when you get to bigger cities um, that have more roads and they're closely to, uh, intertwined and together, like Atlanta, you see how it has kind of like the yellow tint almost. If you look, it's going to be hard to show in the video uh, on camera, but if you actually look around Atlanta area, there will actually be a kind of grayish box that goes around it. And the reason you have that is uh, because that actually lets you know that on another page, it actually has a zoomed in portion for you to look at. So just like I showed you the Atlanta area, if you flip over to the next page, here it says, you see how it says Atlanta and vicinity? If you look at it, it will actually show you a more in-depth uh, look at the uh, surrounding roads and the way the roads intersect and whatnot in the Atlanta area. So, flip back. All right, another portion to look at and understand is you need to understand uh, what the symbols mean in the map. All right. As soon as I can find the page with it, I'll be able to actually show you guys. Contents in legend, state, provincial, and city maps and indexes. All right, very important right here. This part breaks down which page each state is on in alphabetical order. The map legend will be your friend. This will let you know what different things mean on the map. So when you come across them, you're like, oh, I'm not sure what that means. You flip back to the legend and it tells you what that particular symbol looks like or what it means all right now that being said as you can see you have the symbol right here this symbol that means way station that's exactly that means that's a way station on that side of the interstate you see the red dot outlined in black with the air that points to whatever side that will let you know that what side of the interstate it's on all right, so you see you have a way station here, a way station here, a uh, way station right here. Actually, there's a way station on both sides because I live out there, so I know exactly where those way stations are. I also know how to skip the way stations because I live out there, so I know exactly where exit to get off at, but I never skip them because I always ride legal. All right, that being said, you will also notice, all right, you see those green boxes right there? This is I-20. You see those green boxes? Those represent exits. All right? All those green boxes represent exits. As you will see, as you progress down I-20 from um, going from west to east, the numbers get progressively larger. All the way till you get out here to Augusta where I live. And as you can see, like I said before, it kind of has the yellow tint. And then also have the gray, I'm going to try to zoom in as much as I can. You see that gray box right there? The gray box. Uh, get Actually, let me get a pen so I can point to it because my finger just takes up the entirety of the screen. All right. As you can see, the gray box that goes around Augusta. I'm going to put a marking on it right there. Right there. You see how it kind of goes around right there the gray box that will let you know that the cutout for that area that will show you what's everything zoomed in in that gray box so the gray box right there of the Augusta area is up here on the same page you see how the area that is outlined in that gray box is up there and it gives you a closer and more in-depth look all right now what you can actually see is if you look closely this is I-20 I-20, as you can see, has 200 exits in Georgia. Now, with that being said, typically states will have exits lined up with the mile marker in the state. So as you see, there's 200 exits on I-20 in Georgia. If you come over here, this portion of the map right here will tell you the interstates and how long the distance you have of uh, the interstates for that interstate in the particular state. So, as you can see, there's 200 exits for um, I-20 in Georgia, and there's 203 miles. So typically, you will have, oh, I just leaned on my horn. 
by accident. <laughs> Typically, the number of miles will match the exit, all right? So basically what I'm getting at is, let's say you're driving down the road and uh, I live out in Grovetown, all right? That's where I live. I'm not gonna say my address, but yeah, that's where I live, okay? I know to get off at my house, I need to get off at the exit for exit uh, 190, all right? 190 also happens to match up 190 is right about here because that's the way station like literally a mile up the road is where I with the exit from where I live so like literally way station where I live and there's also a good nice little truck stop right there in case anybody's passed through Augusta it's a nice little truck stop right there and there's also several other parking spots around that area that's not in a truck stop book but yeah, if you look, you'll find a spot to park your truck. And the Walmart out there doesn't care either. That's a heads up. They said they have a sign that says no trucks, but they don't care. Um, so yeah. But that's the 190 that also coincides with the 190 mile marker. Now, I want to caution you because not every state is like that. I specifically marked off Vermont. If you look on I-91 in Vermont, you go all the way to the top. Oh, snap. What? Vermont's only like, what, 28, 29, 30 miles long? Vermont's not a very big state. However, if you look up here, I-91 is 177 miles long. So be aware that there are some states that will have, like, the exits are so, the, the exits will go in numerical order, but they don't necessarily match how many miles that state has. So you, that's part of uh, trip planning looking at the states looking at where you're going through look at what your um look at what your um uh, trying to talk on it's getting a little toasty in here look at the road you're going to go on look to see if it's uh you're able to drive a semi truck on it or not most of the time the company's going to give you routing that's pretty pretty good with keeping you off of roads that you don't need to be on but never hurts a second to guess and go look at your routing versus what the gps says and uh figure out your own plan in case it does route you somewhere that you don't need to be so yeah um another few small things if you notice odd number interstates run north and south even number interstates run east and west then you have some interstates that have three digits if you notice those three digits those three digits the last two numbers in that three number interstate usually that's that interstate will actually connect with the uh, interstate that has the last two numbers. Uh, I'll give you an example. I'll go back to Georgia. Out where I live, we have Interstate 520, also known as Bobby Jones. As you can see, it says 520, not 420. Don't get excited, people. 520. It intersects with I-20. All right. It runs east and west. At least it says it runs east and west, but. Yeah, basically that's the way that's the way it would be if you use a GPS or reading the map east and west for 520. You also see how it starts with an odd number. 520. The last two are the parts of the interstate that it intersects with the main interstate. The first number is odd. If the first number is odd, most of the time that means it creates a semicircle, which means it's not going to wrap around and make a complete loop. It will start on one side, route you around that city, or route you through that city depending on where you're going or where, where you're at. It might route you around the city or route you through the city, and um, it will create a semicircle. It won't make a full, complete evolution. It'll start in one spot, in somewhere else. Now, you also have to be aware that you have some that start with even numbers. Even numbers typically will run around the entirety of the city. Atlanta, if you notice, Interstate 85 runs dead through the middle of Atlanta, all right? It runs straight through it. Now, anybody that's from Georgia or the Atlanta folk, you guys know about 285. 285 runs around the duration of Atlanta. You see how it's a one big circle? One big circle. It starts with an even, num it starts with an even number, two, 85 are the last two digits of the interstate that runs through it as you can see interstate 85 and it in intersects with 285 so that's another thing to remember right there 
Now you will get to some states where you will have like a three digit interstate that runs and it runs through multiple states. Like if you, when you're around the, uh, what is it? Four, I believe it's four, I'm going off memory right here. I believe it's 475. Um, when you're up in the, when you're up in the northern part of Kentucky, Ohio slash Indiana area, 475, I believe it hits like all three of those states. <laughs> and uh, it'll go from like east to west to north to south, just depending on what state you're in. So yeah, just be careful of that. Don't get it confused. But yeah, if you have any other questions, drop them in the comments. Also, send me an email to my second email address, jevicboy2 at yahoo.com if you have any more uh, questions regarding this topic. Like I said, it's a very quick, very basic map reading video. And uh, yeah, remember to like, comment, subscribe, guys. Have a wonderful day, and I'll be coming at you guys with another video showing how I planned the trip for the voyage I just finished and how all this will come together. But I had to drop this video first. All right, guys, take care.